Father God, we just give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We thank you once again for another opportunity to come together in the fellowship with you and the fellowship with one another. Father, we thank you for each and every one that's here tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the healing manifestation in Beverly's body, in Duke's body, in Willie's body. We thank you, Father, that they are completely healed in the name of Jesus. No devil in hell can stop your people. For greater is you that's on the inside of us than he that is in the world. And we have the victory. Amen. Father, we thank you that as we study your word, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirit to contain your word. And Father, I thank you for thinking through my mind and speaking through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name, and everyone in agreement, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're teaching on, from a series that I have, Idol Worship Revealed. And in this series, I'm revealing idol worship. But we're, we're specifically, we're teaching on the truth about Easter. Now, the purpose of this teaching is not to bring any condemnation or make anybody feel guilty. It's to bring the truth forward. For so many years, Christians have been celebrating Easter as being part of the resurrection time of Jesus, of the celebration of Jesus' resurrection, and it's not. What I want to do in this teaching, hopefully you'll get it, is to show that it's two different or two separate celebrations. The Easter celebration is the celebration of the world, and the resurrection of Jesus celebration is the Christian celebration. All right? Now, last week I, I, I covered, I know that most people say that we can celebrate Easter because Easter is found in the Bible. But the word Easter in the Bible is a mistranslation. Because the Greek word there is Pascha, P-A-S-K-H-A-H. -H, and it refers to Passover. And everywhere else in the Bible that that word is found, Passover is used. Wherever that Greek word is found in the Bible, Passover is used. And the traditional King James Bible is the only Bible that has the word Easter in it. All right. And we said that during the time of the Christian celebration of Jesus' resurrection, they also had the, the pagan world set aside a celebration of Easter for the pagan goddess Easter, which is where the word Easter comes from. Easter is E A S T E R. Easter is E A S T R E. The R and the E is reversed. And she's known as the goddess of fertility. All right? We also, last week, we started talking about practices, uh, rituals, customs, and practices that are associated with the pagan Easter celebration. We covered Easter egg, we talked about the Easter egg, and we also talked about the Easter bunny. Now, what I discovered this week, because I'm, I'm constantly researching, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm what you call a student of the word, so I'm always looking, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking in the word, and I discovered something that I didn't even know that I, I found out that the origin of the rabbit known as the Easter Bunny, coming into existence began with the story of a bird, <laughs> it's funny to me, of a bird that desired to be a rabbit. And the goddess Easter honored the bird's desire and turned the bird into a rabbit. <laughs> so this, this is how far out this thing is, okay? This is how far out it is. And the reason why I brought that to you today, because the next thing that we're going to talk about is the Easter egg hunt. And see, well, just, just, just let me get into it, and, we'll, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So the next uh, practice, uh, a ritual that we're going to cover is the Easter egg hunt. We already covered the Easter egg. We covered the Easter bunny. Now we're going to talk about the Easter egg hunt, okay? Hunting for eggs originated from the search for gifts from the, from the rabbit, the Easter bunny, the morning of the Easter celebration. It was believed that rabbits often made their nests in fields, therefore people would go in the fields in search of gifts from the Easter bunny. Now, because it was believed that the rabbits often made their nests in fields, 
and because it was a practice to search for gifts from, from them, the children would also go into the fields and search for their eggs. And that's why I brought in the part about the, uh, it was said that the bird was turned into a rabbit because of the eggs, because rabbits don't have eggs. See? Most people don't even know that. Rabbits give live birth. They don't have eggs, okay? <laughs> but the, they use the term eggs because the bird was supposed to have turned into the rabbit, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Listen, when you get into this, this, this idol worship, because that's exactly what it is, it, it gets way out there. I'm just touching the surface of it. I'm telling you, it gets, you'll be surprised. The uh, Corinthians used to uh, worship with, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, with, uh, that it, it's, the name of it causes you to laugh all the time. Oh, I can't think of the name of it. But it's a drug. And, and, and the only way that they, can, they could uh, talk to their God that they was worshiping was they had to get high. <laughs> one laughing at. I can't think of it, but it's a, it, it's a word for it, and it makes them laugh and, and get all crazy. And, and the only way that they could talk to their God, which was the devil, was they had to get high. All right, so I'm telling you, this, this idol worship thing, Corinthians, the Corinthian was, was well known for idol worship. All right? All right, y'all <laughs> y'all still with me? Y'all got mighty quiet. All right. Um, uh, because the goddess Easter was supposedly was to supposedly have turned the bird into a rabbit, out of gratitude, the rabbit who supposedly could remember how to lay eggs from being a bird would come each spring to the Easter celebration. At the celebration, the rabbit was said to lay eggs in many different sizes and color. For Easter, the goddess of fertility, he, the rabbit was supposed to be showing his gratitude for being turned into a rabbit. So he would come and supposedly lay eggs of different sizes and color. That's where they get the coloring of the eggs and that kind of thing from, okay? <laughs> Tell you, it's funny when you get into it. The children would therefore go into the fields and search for the eggs. Thus, the Easter egg hunt was born. All right. It was often believed <laughs> that the uh, most beautiful egg had a surprise inside of it. When the, when the rabbit laid the egg, it was believed that the that the most beautiful or colorful egg had a prize in it. That's where they get that when they send the little eggs around and they put the little plastic eggs they put prizes in it. That's where that comes from. And they used to judge. They had a contest where they would judge the beauty of the eggs. <laughs> now the truth is rabbits don't lay eggs they give live birth okay hunting for their eggs is to participate in an untrue ritual they don't lay eggs eggs the, the, <laughs> the eggs was used as a fertility it, it, in, the, in, in, in the Roman in, in, in Roman culture the egg symbolized uh, power, it, 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 was, it was a symbol for power to produce or cause a person to produce children or have a family. That's where the fertility goddess come in at. Okay? Alright. So we talked about the egg. We talked about the Easter bunny. We talked about the Easter egg hunt. Now I'm going to tell you something that most people don't even know. Another ritual that they celebrated during this time was the eating of hot cross buns. I know, most people don't know that, see? <laughs> Hot cross buns were originally called bound, B-O-U-N. That was their original name. And they were made from fine flour and honey. It was said that these buns were popular in some churches during this time they were eating. Ain't nothing wrong. They sell hot cross buns. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You can eat them, but it's just that when they was eating them, it was during the time to celebrate the Easter ceremony, okay? It was also said that you could special order them. Raisins, no raisins. <laughs> Regular or potato. However you desired it, okay? Now, <laughs> now the history behind these buns is that they were offered in worship of the queen of heaven. 
and, she, and, that's, and the queen of heaven is known as Ishtar, and Ishtar is another name for Easter. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7. Praise Jesus. And we're going to look at verse 18. Jeremiah 7, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. When you get there, say amen. It says, The children gathered wood, the fathers kindled the fire, and the women knead bread, dough, meaning that they shaped the dough and formed it, to make cakes for the queen of heaven. And they pour out drink offerings to other gods that they might that, that they may provoke me to anger. Jeremiah was saying that God said that these children of Israel, they were, they, were, <laughs> they were making cakes, they were making bread to offer it to the queen of heaven. Now, <laughs> the queen of heaven was a name for Ishtar, okay? And she was the Mes Mesopotamian goddess of love and fertility. Ishtar is another name for Istra. Because she's the god of fertility. All right? After the fall of Jerusalem, the refugees continued to worship this goddess. Even though God warned them, they, they, they continued to worship this goddess. While you're in Jeremiah, you go to chapter 44. I want to share something with you here. I'm going to read from the Living Bible, though, because of time. But. This teaching, when, when, when we do teaching like this, it's not to make you decide to do something. It's, it's up to you if you decide you want to continue to celebrate Easter or not. But our job is to put the truth before you, okay? Now, Jeremiah did the same thing with the Israelites. But you know what they said? They said, you know what? We don't, we don't believe that false message from God. They said, we're going to serve, we're going we gonna, to we gonna worship the queen of heaven because when we used to worship her, I'm going to read all that to you. When we used to worship her, we had plenty to eat. We, were, we, we didn't like anything. And as soon as we stopped worshiping her, then everything went bad for us. That's what they literally said. So they were saying that the, the, queen, of, the queen of heaven, which is, and it's not talking about heaven where, God is just talking about, you know, the atmosphere where, where Satan really lives, okay? They were saying that as long as we worship Ishtar, Istra, the queen of heaven, then we were blessed. So they, their source was the queen of heaven, okay? Now, I'm going to start here in Jeremiah chapter 44. I'm going to start at verse 11. Remember, I'm reading from the Living Bible, so it's going to sound a little different than yours, but it, 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 it brings the point out that I want. Starting at verse 11, if you have it, say, I have it. It says, therefore, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel says, there is fury in my face and I will destroy every one of you. I will take this remnant of Judah that insisted on coming here to Egypt and I will consume them. They wanted to go back to the bondage. Egypt represents bondage and they want to go back in bondage. OK, and, and you know what? We, we laugh at this kind of stuff, but we got people in the world that they do the same thing. They come in, come in and, 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 and they come into the house of the Lord and things don't move the way that they think it should move. They want to go right back in Egypt and start back doing the same thing that they were doing because they felt like the devil is deceiving them into thinking that they're more blessed out there than they are in the house of God. All right, it says, uh, I will destroy this. I'm, I'm still on verse 11. I will destroy every one of you. Verse 12, I will take this remnant of Judah that insisted on coming here to Egypt and I will consume them. They shall fall here in Egypt, killed by famine and sword, and shall die from the least to the greatest. They shall be despised and loathed, cursed and hated. Aren't you glad for grace? <laughs> when, you read, when I read stuff like this, I say, thank you, Lord, for grace. Because he doesn't deal with us the way he dealt with them. Because all of us will be dead. Most of, most of all of us will be dead. 
It says, they shall despise they shall be despised and loathed, cursed and hated. Verse 13. I will punish them in Egypt just as I punished them in Jerusalem by sword, famine, and disease. Not one of them shall escape from my wrath except those who repent of their coming and escape from the others by returning again to their own land. Verse 15. Then all the women pres present and all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to idols it was a great crowd of all the Jews in southern Egypt answered Jeremiah. Now, this Jeremiah giving the message, right? Watch what they said. We will not listen to your false messages from God. We will do whatever we want. Well, we get that today. When you present the truth to people, people say, I don't, want, I don't care. I'm a, I'm a trick or treat. <laughs> I'm going to practice Easter if I want to. And you have that right. You have the right to do that, but let me tell you something. There are consequences that you open yourself up to when you get involved in that kind of stuff. All right? <laughs> Verse 16 again says, We will not listen to your false messages from God. We will do whatever we want to. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven and sacrifice to her just as much as we like. Just as we and our fathers before us and our kings and princesses have always done in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For in those days we were happy. <laughs> in those days we had plenty to eat and we were well off and happy. But ever since we quit burning incense to the queen of heaven and stopped worshiping her, we have been in great trouble and have been destroyed by sword and family. You see that they, they equated their destruction to not worshiping the queen of heaven, Ishtar, Istra. Well, Y'all better get this. Verse 19. And the women added, do you suppose that we were worshiping the queen of heaven and pouring out our li uh, libations to her and making cakes for her with her image on them? So the cakes had her image on them. Without our husbands knowing it and helping us? Of course not. Then Jeremiah said to all of them, men and women alike, who had given him that answer. This is what Jeremiah responded to them. Do you think the Lord didn't know that you and your fathers and your kings and princes and all the people were burning incense to idols in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? See, <laughs> You may hide what you do from man. You may smoke the joint in the dark, drink the liquor up under the house, watch the porno on the computer, and man don't see you, but God sees you. And he's the one that you got to give an account to, not man. And see, that's what Jeremiah is trying to do. God knew, God saw everything you was doing. A lot of times, because... There's no negative consequences immediately to what you are doing or what people are doing. They think that they got away with it. But God sees everything. And, and I'm telling you, there are consequences. We're not under the curse. God doesn't punish you for your sin. But there are consequences. You open the door to the enemy. You open the door for the enemy to come in your life. When you get into things that, that is an abomination to God and the and the practice of idols, the worship of uh, the participation of the practice of idols is an abomination to the Lord. Amen. All right, verse 20. Then Jeremiah said to all of them, men and women alike, who had given him that answer. Do you think the Lord didn't know that you and your fathers and your kings and princesses and all the people were burning incense to idols in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? It was because he could no longer bear all the evil things you were doing that he made your land desolate and incredible ruin, cursed without an inhabitant as it is today. And what that says is that God went as long as he can. He put up with that stuff as long as he can and he, and he caused their land to be desolate. Maybe, maybe your, your land, your money, your situation is desolate because of the things that you're doing. See, we can't see here what you're doing at home, but God can see. God see everything you're doing. And we have to keep things on the up and up. I'm telling you. When we're dealing with our money, when we're dealing with uh, uh, 
how we conduct our lives. We got to keep things on the up and up. Not that God is going to punish you, but that you open the door for destruction in your life. So you may have desolate ground or desolate land at your, in, in, in your life because of the things that you're involved in or the things that you're not doing or should be doing. See, we don't want to hear that kind of teaching because grace has said, see, some of us take the grace message and think that it says that we don't have to do nothing and God going to still bless us. Okay? You don't have to do nothing to get saved. Okay? You're saved by grace through faith. But if you notice, the promises are based on condition. They're a condition tied to the promise. You know? You can't the reason why, what I'm saying is, the condition is to be in Christ, of course. But what I'm saying is, you can't go out there and think that you can do anything you want and the anointing and power of God is going to manifest through your life. It ain't going to happen like that. You can go to heaven, but you're going to suffer right here on earth. You're going to miss out here on earth things that God has provided for you because you've taken the grace message too far. I'm serious. You can't, you can't see from some people I hear from, from the way people talk, they, they think they can go out and, and practice uh, living together, not married, and, and still operate in the blessing of the Lord. You know what I mean? That, listen, folks, that's opening the door for the enemy. God is love. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I've, I've experienced it myself. I've made bad choices, and God still blessed me. But you can't practice that kind of thing and expect for the blessing of the Lord to still be manifesting in your life. All righty then. <laughs> All right, it says, um, verse 23, he said, For this very reason, all those terrible things have, been, have befallen you, all these terrible things have befallen you, is because you have burned incense and sinned against the Lord and refused to obey him. Then Jeremiah said to them all, including the women, listen to the word of the Lord, all you citizens of Judah who are here in Egypt. Verse 25. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says both you and your wives have said that you would never give up your devotion and sacrifices to the queen of heaven. And you have proved it by your actions. Then go ahead and carry out, carry out your promises and vows to her. But listen to the word of the Lord, all you Jews who are living in the land of Egypt. I have sworn by my great name, says the Lord, that it will do you no good to seek my help and blessing anymore, saying, O oh Lord our God, help us. For I will watch over you, but not for good. I will see to it that evil befalls you, and you shall be destroyed by war and famine until all you are dead. Only those who return to Judah, it would be but a tiny remnant, shall escape my wrath. But all who refuse to go back, who insist on living in Egypt, shall find out who tells the truth. I or they. Listen, God was rebuking them for worshiping Easter. It, it, the Bible calls her the queen of heaven which is a, a, the other name for her is Ishtar. Ishtar is, the, is another name for Astoreth. Astoreth is, is another name for Istra. And, and next week, I'm a, we're going to get into it, and I'm going to show you where Astoreth are, is the sister of Baal. See, Easter is idol worship. So, if we participate in the practices that are associated with Easter, we are participating in idol worship. I'm telling you, it had, these are two separate cel uh, celebrations. Easter is the celebration to worship Easter, Ishtar, Ishtar, all these names, Astaroth, Astaroth, okay? Queen of heaven. All those are the fertility god. I hear you, Bill. All those are the fertility goddess. Okay? They have nothing to do with Christ's resurrection. That's why God was angry with them. 
That's why they told Jeremiah, we're not going to listen to that false message coming from you. We're going to keep on worshiping her. We're going to keep on making bread with her picture on it. And God said, well, keep doing it. You just keep doing it. We're going to see who telling the truth. Elijah did something like that, didn't he? He said, let's see who God is real. Didn't Elijah do that? And Elijah proved that our God is real. <laughs> as, as brother Chuck said is real our God is real All right. so my point is listen it's up to you you can do it if you want but I'm here to tell you that Easter eggs Easter egg hunting bunnies all that kind of stuff has to do with worship idol worship and next week I'm going to show you in the Bible where it says that all idol worship, I don't care what you give to idols, you know what you're doing? You're worshiping demons. You're worshiping demons. When they give their, their uh, sacrifices to the, to the idols when they come in front of them, they're giving them to demons. So now, now just think, now this is food for thought. If, 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 if all this is idol worship and we're worshiping demons, then when I participate in something like that, Aren't I opening my life up to the demon? And whatever the demon has, he can now, I've now given him opportunity to come in my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, in uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 12, we were studying this verse today in the Amplified Bible. It says, don't do anything that would discredit the name of God or the name of Christ. Don't do anything that would discredit him. It also says, uh, you, you're to, where it talks about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, where it says to do that, you're to do it by distrusting yourself. Meaning that you can't lean to your own understanding. You can't reason things out. If the Bible says something, then you just got to trust what the Bible says, even if you don't have complete understanding of it. All right. Then it says, be watchful so that you don't get into temptation. Don't, don't, don't get, see, this is how you work out your own salvation. Don't get involved in things that may pull you into temptation. Like I, I gave the example when I was teaching today that if a person has been delivered from alcohol and, you know, most people, when, when you come to Christ new, you're fired up. You know what I mean? You want to just tell everybody about it. But if you just got delivered from alcohol, you don't have any business going to the bar talking about witnessing to somebody. Don't put yourself in a temptation in a place where you're going to be tempted. If you go to the bar, take a whole crew with you so that when you start to veer, they can pull you in place. You understand? So we have to be watchful. We can't, we can't get involved. We need to uh, investigate before we participate. Just because mom and them did it don't mean that I have to do it because they may not have investigated so I'm not going to get, I've learned that I'm not going to participate in something that may open my life up to destruction. I'm delivered from the curse. It ain't God doing it. It's the choices I make have consequences. See, a lot of times we mix consequences up with God's punishment. But the consequences to every choice, you go out and rob a bank, there are consequences. You go to jail, God, people say, well, God put me in to get my attention. No, fool. You put yourself in there because you made a bad choice. You understand? And, and, and this, is, this is how we live. But it's time for us to, listen, we got to stand up. Somebody got to become mature. Somebody got to become an example for Christ. First uh, Peter chapter 2, he talks about that. He talks about how we're to live a, a, a life above reproach and blame. You know, if we, we, can't, if we look like the world, how are we going to bring the world to Christ? Think about it. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for revealing to us the truth of your word. We thank you, Father, for it's our desire to do your will. And we thank you that you empower us to do your will. You give us the desire to do your will. So we thank you, Lord. And, and Father, I pray for each and every one in here. I thank you, Lord, for revealing to them any uh, idol worship that may be in their life that they don't recognize i thank you for revealing it to them and to me as well father for my our desire is to be in your perfect will and we love you lord and we give you praise in jesus name